Hello everyone, Nick here once again with yet another Android box review. Today's model comes from one of my favorite developers of high quality special function boxes and is also a long time sponsor to this channel. I'm speaking of no other than Buzz TV, and this is one of two boxes that I have for you called the E5 and this is the budget model. What makes this model different is that it's Google certified and can stream movies and TV shows from premium subscription services and it can also be used to watch multiple live TV subscription services using its special function. In this video, we take a look at why I call it a special function box as well as a detailed insight into its hardware and firmware features. So you have that right after this quick unboxing. So welcome back and thanks for keeping it locked during that quick unboxing. So Buzz TV is a professional TV box developer and they provide one of the best packaging in the industry to secure and deliver their boxes so much that the packaging itself gives you a sense of the quality of the device inside. So in the box you have the E5 model itself. They provide you with a Buzz TV IR200 infrared remote control with full live TV and EPG guide features along with a pair of AA batteries. You get one HDMI cable, a 5 volts to amps power supply, a USB Type-C charging cable for the power supply, and a support card with QR code tutorials for the remote and for its user manual. So as for the box itself, its entire body is made of plastic with an Allen key pattern to the top with the Buzz TV logo at the center. For input output ports, it comes with one HDMI 2.1 display port, one RJ45 100 megabits per second Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one AV port with a reset button on the inside, and its DC power input jack to its rear. To the side, it has one USB 3.0 port one USB 2.0 port and a micro SD card slot. To the opposite side, it has a power button. At the front, it has an LED power light and below the box, it has four anti-skate rubber feet and lots of ventilation holes. So upon startup for the first time, you will be greeted with the Buzz TV animation for a few seconds. Then you will have to complete the first startup wizard. So this is Buzz TV's trademark launcher and it's one of four launchers available under the Buzz TV utility section, which I'll get to in just a moment. It has a couple of unique features. Firstly, starting from the bottom, it has a horizontal scrolling panel that lists all apps installed on the box. Just above that, to the left, you have a shortcut to its app section and to its right, you have a shortcuts bar. To the top is where you have its special function I mentioned in the intro. This is where you can access its server hub, where you can host multiple live TV subscriptions, video on demand, and a TV series. You also have access to full EBG guide for each service you enter. I'll give you a brief survey of its settings area in just a moment. To the top right here, you have a shortcut to its settings area. This is where you can access its Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings, firmware updates, you can change its background image, and you have Buzz TV utility settings. Under server settings is where you can configure your live TV subscriptions. You can use the Mac server feature, the Extreme Codes API login method, or you can use an MTU playlist. And with this hub, you can run multiple services from one central location. Also, to the top, you have a date and time widget and a weather widget. This launcher is running on Android TV OS, so it does not have a navigation bar or status bar with system controls. So for operating system and firmware features, here it shows its operating system is Android 11 TV OS version and here is its current firmware build information with access to developer options. The good news with Boss TV is that they do provide firmware updates. For firmware features, you get 4K 2160p display up to 59.94Hz. You get HDR display, and later in the video, I'll test for HLG. It also has an adaptive HDR feature, 
This ensures that HDR is only activated when you play an HDR video and not have your launcher looking washed out due to high contrast. You have from 8-bit YCBCR444 up to 12-bit YCBCR442 and you have RGB 8-bit. These options mostly are for users who have OLED and other very high-end TVs as most standard HDR TVs will use YCBCR420 10-bit. It has HDMI CEC options and a special virtual HDMI CEC switch which allows you to power off connected HDMI devices that do not support HDMI CEC. You have screen position settings. This comes in handy to adjust the size of your screen especially on TVs where the edges of the launcher is overlapping beyond the frame of your TV screen. You have surround sound audio options and I'll check in just a minute to see which audio decoders are included. You get 54 various languages to choose from and you have some sleep timer settings. For pre-installed apps, these are what come pre-installed. You have your standard Google Play services apps such as Play Store, Chrome browser and YouTube. You have AppToy TV as an alternative APK app store and they pre-installed Disney Plus, Netflix and a VLC player. So I'll install some additional apps and continue. So I've successfully installed all my apps. Some I had to sideload using a pen drive, some I had to update using the APK App Store, and others were found on the Android TV OS version of the Play Store. In case you didn't know, there's a difference between the Android TV version of the Play Store and the mobile version like the ones found on your mobile phones. The Android TV Play Store is tailored towards apps working on your TV which does not have a touchscreen function. So most apps are developed to be navigated with a direction pad because that's what you'll mostly be using to navigate your TV. But that's not totally 100% accurate as the operating system was meant to be installed on TVs only and not so much Android boxes. The popular way we navigate Android boxes now includes the use of a mouse pointer or cursor with a long click menu pop-ups and drag and drop shortcuts along with key mapping apps that allow us to map gamepads and mouse and keyboard functions to touchscreen functions. This allows us to play touchscreen games and apps on our TVs where we don't have touchscreen function. So there are lots of apps that you will find on the mobile version that will not show up in the TV version of the Play Store. The good news is, if you insist that you must use these apps, you can sideload them using an APK file. The bad news is, if the Android TV operating system is not rooted, not all key mapping apps will work, just a few. So let's take a look at its system and hardware information. So this chipset is Amlogic and this is their budget model as I indicated during the intro. So it has 2GB of DDR4 RAM and 32GB of internal storage, which is an unusual combination because you normally get 2GB, 16GB or 4GB, 32GB. So it's great that you are not adversely limited in your internal storage. Its Bluetooth version says here 4 plus, but it's actually version 5.0. So its CPU is the Amlogic S905X4 and it's a quad-core ARM Cortex-A55 model configured in 32-bit mode with a maximum CPU clock range of 2.0 GHz. It says that it only supports 32-bit ABIs, which means it can only run 32-bit apps and games. Its display and graphics are powered by the ARM Mali G31 GPU, which is the longest running because of its high performance on medium to low end models. It has a refresh rate of 60Hz with OpenGL version 3.2, which is great for gaming. Its network adapter provides 2.4GHz plus 5GHz AC Wi-Fi connectivity. Its operating system is Android 11, internally codenamed Red Velvet Cake, and it shows that it's not rooted. Its Mali G31 GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support, which makes it also good for gaming. Its idle operating temperature is around 60 degrees Celsius, and from my experience, this is quite acceptable, and it's where it remains during streaming movies and TV shows. However, I will record its levels during the gaming segment to see how high it increases to determine if it overheats or needs a cooling fan during graphics intensive activities. 
Under Codecs, in this list you will find all the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR, HLG, AV1 and Dolby Vision self-hosted video files. However, there are no surround sound audio decoders such as Dolby Atmos EAC3 or DTS HD. I will however check if you can achieve surround sound audio using software decoding from media players. So that is system and hardware information. So as I mentioned during the intro that its firmware is Google certified but cannot run movie subscription services in HD or 4K. Here is DRM information is showing that it has Google Widevine Level 1 with HDCP 2.3 protection which is currently the latest security encryption to protect outgoing HDMI signals from piracy. So with this level of certification, the question is, can you play movies or TV series from services such as Netflix, Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Hulu, Sling TV, and Peacock? Well, when it comes to Netflix, you are limited to HD 1080p resolution because Buzz TV boxes usually don't provide a Netflix ESN certification. However, there is a way if you have an HD or 4K subscription to get at least HD 1080p. This is done by sideloading a modified version of Netflix that utilizes the protection level provided by the DRM. But please note, this is not some modified version that will allow you to get free Netflix, truth in fact that's quite impossible. This modified version only works on boxes that has Widevine Level 1 with HDCP 2.2 or 2.3 protection along with your paid subscription. So here I'm inside the modified version and as you can see, you can get HD quality. I cannot speak for all subscription services because I only have Netflix and Prime Video, but here in my Prime Video account I'm not getting 4K UHD quality even though it's stating that it has in the movie description. So nonetheless, if your box has Google Wide Vinyl Level 1 with HDCP protection and would like to try out this modified version with your HD or 4K subscription, you would have to email me directly at tvboxstop at gmail.com. You can install the app on boxes that does not have a Google certification and it will play movies, but it will be limited to 430 or 420p resolution even if you are seeing the HD icon. For it to work in HD, I repeat again, the box must have wide vinyl level 1 with HDCP 2.2 or 2.3 protection. For watching YouTube videos, by default it comes with the Android TV version, however, it plays 4K videos but with no HDR, only with an alternative version such as the smart YouTube TV version are you getting 4K HDR with the HDR feature triggering on your TV. For casting or mirroring your mobile devices, it does not come with the official version of Mirrorcast, a built-in Chromecast or Google Assistant feature that can cast or mirror your device in 720p or HD 1080p. So if you would like to cast or mirror your mobile device, you would have to use the AirScreen app or similar. Here I'm mirroring my Android tablet but it's limited to only 420p resolution. For customizing your launcher and navigation experience, it comes with four Buzz TV launchers to choose from that are tailored towards using its special function. The included remote is an infrared remote and most of the home screens are designed to be navigated using its direction pad. I was able to install the menu button alternative navigation bar using the app toy the TV Play Store and it installs without issues. However, due to no root access, its recent apps feature is not working. All other features are functional. The Buzz TV launchers allow you to use custom images as wallpapers, but you don't get to use live wallpapers. You can install an alternative launcher of your own such as a DW Launcher 2 or the Android TV launcher, but these launchers have compatibility issues with the interface.
for reading external storage and converting external storage to shared internal storage, here I have a 64 GB micro SD card inserted into its micro SD card slot and a 4 TB HDD hard drive connected via its USB 3.0 port. So the box can read storage in excess of 4 terabytes via USB and it can convert up to 128 gigabytes to shared internal storage via SD card. You can convert external storage to shared internal storage via USB also, but the more convenient solution is to use the micro SD card slot. So during the system and hardware information segment, I showed that it comes with all the decoders for the playback of HDR10, HLG and AV1 videos and we also saw some Dolby Vision decoders. So I will play one HDR10 video, one HLG and one AV1 video to see if it triggers the HDR or HLG feature on my TV. I will not be looking for Dolby Vision feature as to date I have never successfully played a self-hosted Dolby Vision video and got the feature to activate on my TV. Only when playing in Netflix videos on certified boxes that has a Netflix ESN it works. So as you can see, it plays HDR10, HLG, AV1 and Dolby Vision videos triggers the HLG feature also. We also saw during the system and hardware information segment that it does not have any surround sound audio decoders. So I attempted using various media players to achieve surround sound audio using software decoding. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object. So here it produces Dolby Atmos. Powerful moving audio that transcends from channel to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. When set to front surround, it produces Dolby Digital Plus. Whether this you get no audio when you try to play a video with a DTS HD Master Audio. And here it produces a Dolby Surround. No audio with a Dolby True HD. And here a DTSX video results in PCM. 
My findings reveal that out of all the Demedia players, only the VLC player has the ability to produce Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus and Dolby Surround. I could not get DTS-X, DTS HD Master Audio or Dolby True HD. So moving on to its gaming performance. With Android Gaming, I recommend medium to low graphics settings as that's where it renders Android games the smoothest. Also, its CPU temperature rose to around 78 degrees Celsius during gaming, so it's recommended that you use a cooling fan below the box if you intend to engage in long hours of gameplay. This will protect its CPU from overheating that can result in a premature death of the box. So in benchmarking its performance, let's first take a look at its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. So it has a RAM copy speed of 3405 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 156 megabytes per second and a write speed of 60 megabytes per second. For Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speeds, based on my network of 154 megabits per second, the 5 GHz band achieved the maximum speed of my bandwidth. The 2.4 GHz band also performed impressively, achieving 79%. However, its Ethernet LAN port is not a gigabit LAN port, so it's limited and it achieved just 61%. For single-core and multi-core performance, it scored 5,614 single-core and 16,592 multi-core. In the benchmarking its GPU, it did not qualify for any Vulkan graphics test and it generated a score of 9,769. And it got an overall and total benchmark score of 96,835. So let's now see where these benchmarks places it on my rankings chart. So here is my master TV box rankings chart and it ranks at position 33 based on its Antutu benchmark score and it received a 3 out of 5 star rating based on the pros and cons identified during this review. If you would like to view this chart to compare it to other boxes or you would like to see my top rank models, you can do so using the link in the description directly below this video. I also provide price comparison and coupon links using these links right here along with links to their corresponding videos using these icons. So see the link in the description below. In summary, if you are looking to purchase this box as a live TV streaming hub to host your various subscriptions, then you will not be disappointed as it's well equipped with the software and performance to do so. For Google certification and streaming of subscription services such as Netflix, Prime Video and Disney+, Plus, you will discover that it's not fully Google certified, even though it has wide vine level 1 with HDCP 2.3 protection, it still lacks a Netflix ESN and it does not have built-in Chromecast or Google Assistant feature, hence some services are still limited to basic 480p. For gaming. Though it has a good performing GPU in the Mali G31 with Vulkan support, it only has 2GB of RAM and it's configured in a 32-bit mode, so it's recommended that you set your games to medium to low graphics settings for the best performance. Also, temperatures can get into the 80s during gaming, so it's recommended that you use a cooling fan below the box during gaming to prolong the life of the box by protecting it from excessive heat. With that said, this is not needed if you are simply streaming movies and TV shows as temperatures remain at safe levels. So that ends my review of their new E5 budget model. If you would like to get your hands on this model, you can get it for 10% off the actual price of $119.99, reducing it to $107.19 using my exclusive coupon and the link in the description directly below this video. 
So thanks again for watching my video. And if you are a supporter of this channel, then give this video the thumbs up as it really goes a long way in supporting the work that I do here. And if you are just tuning in for the first time, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and I would like to encourage you to click the subscribe button and ring that notifications bell to keep in the loop as to when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. As mentioned, you can look forward in the coming weeks when I review the high-end model called the X5 that has better hardware and it delivers greater performance. So thanks again for watching, stay tuned and see you in the next one.